Hi there, I'm Chris Sumolowski, and I'm back for the second part of how jet engines work. In the first video, I explained how a turbojet engine works. If you want to see how that works, then just click the link in the in the description of the video in the video below. Excuse me. And today, I'm going to explain how modern jet engines work. The turbojet in modern engine does not consist of the whole engine. It only consists of what we call the core of each engine because modern engines actually use what's called a turbofan engine where some of the air actually bypasses the core and mixes with the exhaust. Now depending on how much of the air bypasses the core it'll be classified as either a high bypass engine where more air bypasses the core than not or a low bypass engine where more air goes into the core than bypasses it. High bypass engines like the one used in civilian aircraft are incredibly efficient because most of the air going through the engine does not get mixed with fuel and burned. This is done essentially by the large fan. Now the fan, most people view it as a propeller and they're not wrong because the fan does suck in air and blow it backwards. However, the fan, in the case of a high bypass engine, is actually more of a compressor than anything else. It blows air through the narrowing bypass duct and this air squeezes as it's forced into a tighter and tighter space. The energy that the fan puts into squeezing the air through the bypass duct and compressing this air cancels out any thrust that the fan would normally produce. Meanwhile, as the air compresses, it flows against and around the outside <clears throat> excuse me, of the combustion chamber and cools it. And when it does that, it'll then expand, not only because it's been heated up by cooling down the combustion chamber, but because it's been compressed and wants to expand back to its original volume, so it expands and then shoots out the back of the nozzle to produce thrust, just like the core of the engine produces thrust, except it doesn't get burned with fuel and doesn't go through an additional turbine stage. Now, in a low bypass engine, it's a bit different because the bypass duct is linear. The low pressure fan is actually a compressor. It acts like the normal compressors on a jet engine, in the core of a jet engine. However, it does not compress the air as much as the fan of a high bypass engine because of the linear duct. And so the fan just blows air straight through, and because the fan does not put as much energy into compressing the air within a low bypass engine, the fan, or the fans, in the case of a low bypass engine, because there's usually more than one fan, typically three, but in this diagram, there's two, the fan actually will produce some thrust due to a reaction force from sucking air in and blowing it backwards usually about 35% of the thrust in a low bypass engine comes from the fan. The remainder of it comes, through, um, comes from the exhaust. However, you may be wondering, you know, why, why is that? Why does it not narrow? And that's because with low bypass engines, like the ones used in fighter planes, the air, sure, it cools the combustion chamber down a little bit, but not that much, not as efficiently as it does with a high bypass engine. And the purpose for that is that the air will then be mixed into the exhaust and it'll cool the exhaust down. Cool the exhaust down so the exhaust is not as hot. It'll not emit as much infrared. The IR signature will go down and thus it'll be much harder to detect using thermal cameras. So low bypass engines are very stealthy that way by having cooler exhaust.
That is unless you turn on the afterburner. Now what an afterburner does is that it, <clears throat> excuse me again, it injects fuel into the, into the exhaust of the engine and the exhaust and this fuel ignites due to the high temperature of the exhaust gases and provides additional thrust. <coughs> Excuse me, my goodness. Afterburners can only be used for short periods because they consume a lot of fuel. They're very inefficient. And the main reason why that is, is because the pressure of the air downstream of the turbine is much lower than it was in the combustion chamber and air or fuel I should say does not burn very well in low pressure low density air though that being said the pressure behind the turbine of a low bypass engine is still considerably higher than the pressure downstream the turbine of a high bypass engine and that's why low bypass engines and no bypass engines are the only ones that can essentially use afterburners, whereas in a, an engine with a bypass ratio of 2 to 1 or greater, an afterburner probably wouldn't work at all. So yes, so, and also if we look at the turbines, they're also different. Instead of having one turbine to drive one compressor, we have multiple turbines. In the case of a high bypass engine, we have the high pressure turbine, which drives the high pressure compressor, the low pressure turbine, which drives the low pressure compressor, and the fan turbine, which drives the fan. In a low bypass engine, they usually have only two turbines, the high pressure turbine, which powers the high pressure compressor, and the fan turbine slash low pressure turbine, which powers both the low pressure compressor, not shown on this diagram, and also the fan at the same time. And if we look at the bypass, I forgot to mention this earlier, but if we look at the bypass, if the afterburner is applied, the bypass will actually go one of two ways. It'll either be injected into the afterburner system or reheat system to supply the fuel with oxygen, and the remainder bypass will actually bypass the afterburner completely and be used to cool the jet pipe and will later exit the engine later downstream with this variable exhaust nozzle, which actually can open and close to a certain degree. Not close completely, but it can widen or narrow. If an afterburner is turned on, it'll widen, allowing for maximum expansion, but if it's not turned on, it'll narrow, allowing for, the <clears throat> allowing for the air to accelerate as much as possible throughout the jet pipe. <coughs> Excuse me. Because of the Venturi effect. And if we look at the inlets, the inlets are also very different. In a low bypass engine, it typically has a subsonic inlet in which the air, the fan, spins and sucks in air and blows it backwards. But in a high bypass engine, we usually have a convergent inlet or a ram inlet pitted air take where the air actually slows down before entering the fan instead of speeding up. It slows down to about Mach 0.5, typically about half the speed of sound. Because if you have a fan, the fan's job is to suck in air and blow it into the engine. If you have a plane moving at say 600 miles an hour, but the fan is only sucking air in at 500 miles an hour, and blowing it back at 500 miles an hour, then the air will decelerate by 100 miles per hour. And so that's a loss. That's the opposite of what we want 
the fan to do, and so we slow the air down through the intake, so the air, so the fan sees slower air and can thus accelerate again and suck it in again and blow it in. Not only that, but as the air compresses in the intake, there's more air for the fan to work with and more air to, for the engine to work with, which allows for, <clears throat> excuse me, my goodness, my voice is just not cooperating with me today, which allows for the engine to work with more air and increase its efficiency. High bypass engines usually work at speeds of 600 miles an hour and above. Low bypass engines usually work between 450 and 600 miles an hour. That's usually their optimum range, though they can be made much more efficient at much higher speeds, up to and above twice the speed of sound with an afterburner. Well, that is for most low bypass engines. Some low bypass engines, such as those used on the F-22 Raptor or Eurofighter Typhoon actually can allow a plane to exceed the speed of sound without the use of an afterburner. This is called supercruise. However, the term supercruise is misleading because even though these planes can theoretically cruise supersonically because they don't need an afterburner for supersonic flight, they still cannot maintain supersonic flight for prolonged periods of time and still have a long-range cruising speed that's much slower than that. With a high-bypass engine, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, with a, so with a high-bypass engine, pretty much all of the thrust comes from the jet, the bypass accelerating and the core accelerating. And with a low-bypass engine, 65% of it comes from the jet, the exhaust accelerating, and the, and the remainder 35 comes from the fan blowing air backwards and acting like a propeller. And if you have an afterburner on, that'll increase the, that'll increase the engine's thrust by about 50%, making it one and a half times more powerful. And there you have it. That is, in a nutshell, the difference between high bypass engines, like the ones used on the 747, and low bypass engines, like the one used on this F-15 Eagle. Thank you for watching this video, and thank you for putting up with my voice and me stumbling upon my explanations.